Hey y'all, well it's story time in regards to that video I posted this morning of my husband and his mistress at the Atlanta airport. So, let me just preface this by saying, I'm a nice person, I'm a sweet person. I'll do anything for my family and my friends. And I'll help anybody out. I try to stay in my own lane. I try not to bother anyone or do any of that. But when people play in my face and plot and plan and do foul stuff, I'm not so nice anymore. And that's how most of us are. So let me start by saying on October 29th of 2022, my husband was scheduled to come home from a trip from Europe. He told me he had been over there working and he worked a lot for his, you know, his corporate job. I thought he was working anyway. Um, told me he had a speaking engagement in Europe. So I um, uh, wanted to make sure that I had dinner and everything ready for him um, by the time he got home. So I called the airline. So I knew the flight number and I was driving. So I couldn't, um, you know, type it in my computer because usually if you just type a flight number in, it'll just pop up what time the flight's going to land. So I had to call the airline that day. And when I asked the flight attendant, or not the flight attendant, I'm sorry, but the, um, you know, the representative, um, what time that flight came in, he asked me for, he asked for my husband's name. And I was like, you don't need his name. I was like, just give me the flight information. You know, if I typed it in, it, I just need the flight information. You don't need his name. So he was adamant about me giving the name. So I gave him the name. He comes back a few minutes later and he says, Mr. Such and Such and Miss What's Her Name landed 20 minutes ago. So I'm in shock. Because I've been married 25, 26 years, and I'm thinking I'm just married to this outstanding, upstanding citizen. So I said, no, just his name. I don't, I don't know who that other person is, but just his name. And the guy states again, he was like, Mr. Such and Such and Miss What's Her Name just landed a few minutes ago, like 20 minutes ago. So I'm sitting in the Kroger parking lot like... Like, what does this mean? I'm still kind of, I'm in a state of shock, actually. So my head is spinning by this time. He was my trying to tell you up, and I'm something. Like, what does this mean? <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So right after that, my husband calls. And I was trying to hold it in and trying to hold what I was feeling in. So I was like, I'm not going to say anything right now. I'm going to wait till he gets to the house. Because he was like, oh, I missed you. It's been a long, long week. This is the hardest money I ever earned. But I wish you could have gone with me. And I was like, okay, well, you know, you can tell me about your trip when you get home. So, okay, stand by, y'all, for the rest. So, okay, y'all. So, when he comes home, I greet him at the door. You know, give him a hug and a kiss. And ask him about his trip while he's unpacking. And um, so I'm like, show me some pictures from your trip. And he was like, oh, I didn't take any pictures. You know, I was running around working and we were just so busy and on the go. We were just, you know, just going to and fro. So I was like, oh, okay. So we go to have dinner. I was like, hey, I called the airlines um, to see what time your flight was getting in. And I said, they told me there was someone else on your itinerary. And I tell him the person's name. And he was like, who is that? And I was like, I don't know. You tell me. He was like, oh, I don't know who that is. And he was like, mm -mm. he said, they must have made a mistake. So I was like, well, okay. Like, so I went along with it, but something about it, my spirit just was not feeling right. So I was like, something about this is just not right. So that night when we go to bed, he's sleeping over there just to snoring. I'm over there tossing and turning because I was like, something about this just does not feel right. So something tells me in the morning when you get up, go check your credit card bills that are on the counter. So the credit card bills are all stacked up out on our kitchen counter and I don't open them because I don't pay the bill. I mean, it's American Express bill each month. They be high. So I was like, I ain't got nothing on it. So no need for me to open them. But I that was my account and I added him to it years ago and I just let him open it, you know, open the bill um, and pay it. And there was sometimes I would open it, but most times I would just look at my portion of it and just keep it moving. So that morning when I get up, I go to church and he tells me that he had to um, leave because he had to catch up on work and all that kind of stuff later on in the day. 
So I was like, okay. So I go to church, and, and when I come back from church, I get ready to go to the Falcon game. But something was like, check one of those credit card bills before you go. When I open up that bill, the woman that the airline employee mentioned that was on his itinerary, her name was up and down my credit card bill. Flights here, flights there, flights to Paris, Delta vacations, um, you know, a country here, an island there, something. And this was in one month. So I'm sitting there like, what in the world? So by this time, y'all, I'm steaming. And I got to go to this Falcon game with my girlfriends and try to act like I'm having a good time. But the whole time, my mind is racing. Damn. So I was like, okay. So I come home that night. I stack up all those bills. I got bills for like eight months worth of bills. Actually, that was October. So 10 months. I pulled from December of 21 to October of 22. And when I tell you, it was very telling. This woman's name was on every one of my bills for each of those months, several times. So while I thought he was out working and telling me that I couldn't travel with him because, you know, he didn't want to get distracted. Oh, he had a travel mate. All right. He had one. Stand by for part three. So I go through all these credit card bills, finds this girl's name for months on my credit card bills, for the last 10 months specifically. Um, so at that time, I reach out, I try to call his phone, call my husband's phone and text him. No answer, no text back. So I call his boy's house because he told me he was going to his boy's house to watch um, football. No answer from him. So I text him and was like, hey, um, is he with you? No answer back. Then all of a sudden, here come my phone ringing. It's my husband. Like, oh, I ran out to get something to eat. Like, what's up? And I was like, oh, you know what's up? I said, and I started repeating the girl's name. And he was like, why do you keep saying that name? And I was like, I kept saying the name. So he was like, well, I don't understand why you keep calling that name. And I was like, oh, yeah. I said, your gig is up. I was like, you nasty motherfucker. I was like, your gig is up. So he was like, I don't know what's going on. I'm on my way home. I'm on my way home. I was like... Bring your ass on home. I was like, come home. Because by this time, I'm furious. So I hang up the phone. I'm just like, live it, y'all. I promise you. I think my blood pressure was on like a thousand that day. So he comes in. And he come in like all Billy Bad. Like, why you keep mentioning that name? And I was like, you tell me why I keep mentioning that name. So I was like, I'm going to ask you this. I said, I'm going to ask you one time. I said, no, I know the truth. I was like, was such and such on this flight with you? He was like, no, I don't know why you keep mentioning that name. I don't know who that is. I said, I'm going to ask you one more motherfucking time mm -hmm. and know that I know the truth. Don't lie to me. And it was like this mask fell off of him. And he sat down in his chair and he was like, yeah, she was with me. And I was like, okay. I said, so that's your girlfriend? He was like, yeah. I said, well, how long you been with her? He said, a couple of years. And I was like, okay. So by this time, I can't hold it together. I mean, I think I, all I remember doing, I remember crying and I had a really, really bad headache. And all he said to me was, and this was what he, what he says was really kind of like cut me. He was like, like he was relieved. He was like, at least I ain't got to lie no more. I'm sorry I hurt you, but at least I don't have to lie anymore. So by this time, I'm like, say what now? So I'm screaming, I'm yelling. My son's upstairs. He comes down, goes back up. Cause I was like, everything's fine. Everything's fine. But my head is like hurting, like really, really bad guys. So I come back to my, my, my bathroom to try to get some, some medicine. So I was like, let me take my blood pressure. Blood pressure was like one, like 190 over 110 or some crazy shit like that. So I was like, let me, I, I got to get to a hospital. I got to get to a hospital. So, Damn. stand by. It gets more interesting. So by this time, my head is banging. And I know I need to go to the hospital. I know something is wrong. So, of course, I'm crying. I'm hysterical, trying to put my clothes on. He's trying to touch me and pet me up like, oh, oh, I'm just so sorry that I made you feel this way. Now, didn't really have any compassion in his voice, any of that kind of stuff. So I was like... Don't touch me. 
So I drive myself to the airport. He was like, I'll drive you. I was like, mm-mm. I said, I'll take my chances. I drive myself to the airport. I get there. Blood pressure is off the charts. To the point, they're like, ma'am, you're about to have a stroke. You got to calm down. And I really couldn't even talk. So they were like, "We, you got to calm down. So they call my doctor. We get the medicine. They try to get it under control. So I'm there for a couple of hours. So I come home, and he's sitting on the couch eating Cheetos. Like, ain't shit happened, right? And it comes in like, oh, what they say? And I was like, they said, take, they got the, got my pressure, you know, kind of down because it went all the way down. It's like, go see a doctor in the morning. So that night I could not sleep. I cried all night long to the point when I got up that morning, I really couldn't even see my eyes were so swollen. So I'm, t I'm tore up. Right. So I go out later that morning. He's, he's uh, upstairs. I come upstairs cause I slept in another bedroom. He's around here like, you know, like, doo, doo, doo. like you know, he having a good day and shit. Like, you know, his, his, his burdens is light. Mine heavy, but his is light. So um, I come up, and then he's out in our family room, and I was like, look, I said, I don't know. And I'm still in a state of confusion. So I was like, I don't know what happened last night. And I was like, I don't know what I've done wrong. Because by this time, I'm blaming myself. I was like, you know, I know I'm getting older, you know, but I try to keep myself up. You know, I try to look, you know, look nice, you know, do whatever I can as a wife. I was like, you know, I've tried my best, so I don't even know what I could have done or what I can do. So I'm taking the blame. And he was like, oh, it's it's not you. Like, it's not you. So, um, but I'm like, no, like, it's got to be me. He was like, not, like, no, you. he's like, you're a good wife. You know, you've been a really good wife. So I was like, well, I'll tell you what. I was like, I, I'm confused here. I say, so what we need to do, I was like, I think we need to sell the house. Let's move away. Try to start over. You go to counseling. I go to counseling. We do some counseling and we, you know, we start over. So he was kind of like real smug with it. Like, well, if that's, that's what you want, like, yeah, we can do that. So I was like, well, what about her? Are you going to stop seeing her? So he paused for like 20 seconds and kind of tilted his head to the side. He was like, I ain't gonna tell you I'm gonna stop seeing her. And I was like, then you want a divorce? He was like, oh, I don't want a divorce. He was like, I ain't gonna let nobody fuck up my money. And I was blown away. When he hit me with a, I don't want a divorce, but I'm gonna keep seeing her. Cause I ain't gonna let nobody fuck up my money. Let me tell you something. That was definitely the wrong answer and told me everything I needed to know about him, about the marriage, and what I needed to do next. So for the next couple of days, I, you know, I'm still in a state of confusion. And I remember going to, once I found the girl's name, I went to Instagram, good old Instagram. You know, you go, go look there, you find anything. So I look up her name, I see her, and I'm really like feeling down. I'm like, oh my God, like she's beautiful. You know, he wants him someone younger, like I ain't all that, da, da, da. So I'm just tearing my ass up. So, you know, my girls called later that day. My best friend called that morning and he was checking in on me and I was trying to hide it from her, but I couldn't. So I'm like in a ball of tears, tell her what's happened. She's in a state of shock. And usually she always got something to say, but she was left speechless. So she calls my other girlfriend. Um, she calls. We all in a state of shock. Everybody's tore to pieces. So that day, um, after, you know, I tell them what, what happened and everything, everybody, we just call it, we all were shocked. So the next day I go and meet with them because I see this girl um, on Instagram and I'm telling them about it. So they asked me to come out to lunch, have lunch with them, my two girlfriends. So, cause they needed to tell me something. So, and I bring it up. I was like, well, I see her pictures on Instagram and I was like, she's pretty. And they were like, girl, she ain't all that damn pretty. Like that's filters and plastic surgeon, a whole bunch of other shit. Like girl, it ain't even all that. And they were like, and kind of, it's like, we ain't trying to offend you. Y'all actually kind of favor each other. Like she may be the younger version of you. So I'm thinking like, I don't look like her. Like that girl's, you know, pretty, like it's, it's, I don't look like that. So in the interim, I was like, well, at least I said they don't have any pictures of themselves up on her Instagram. So they were, my girlfriends was like, that's why we, we needed to meet with you. They were like, there is a picture out there. So by this time, y'all, I'm devastated. So our food tries to come. We have Papa Do's. Food comes. I'm so distraught from tears and looking a hot mess. Um, couldn't really even eat. And we went into how bad off I was. You know you bad off when you can't do this. We needed to pray over our food. I couldn't even put my hands together to pray. 
I have never had that to happen. I couldn't even pray. I literally put my head down on the table while they were saying a prayer and cried. And basically, they made me try to eat because I, I really could not eat anything. Damn. So it, it was just um, it was just a complete mess. So when I get home, my husband, he was actually gone. I think he was gone, but, you know, he claimed he had a trip or something. And then he tells me when he did come home, like, well, I need to talk to you because I think we need a little break. So he was like, you need a break so you can think about some things. And I was like, huh? Like, I need to think about some things. He was like, yeah, you need a break so you can think about some things. So yeah, to add insult to injury, he tells me he needs to go away for three to six months for me to think about some things and to think some things over. And I was like, I need to think some things over. I was like, I don't need to think about anything. He was like, yeah, I need to go away so you can think about some things. So I'm like, okay. And this is a straw that broke the camel's back when he said this. And I knew that this man actually had no love for me and that he had been planning and plotting for a long time. He was like, yeah, and if you find somebody in that three to six month um, time frame, I'll understand. Now, who tell their spouse that? If they really love you, they don't want you all sleeping with nobody else. Not if everything, everybody normal, ain't nobody sick or doing anything like that. So I knew then, I was like, I don't have but one other option. Divorce is the only option for me. And I tell you, I prayed about it, asked God about it. And when I tell you, he was sending me signs. If you listen, he will send you signs. And he sent me sign after sign after sign, y'all. Probably so hit you I over here with divorce lawyers. And each day I've gotten stronger. And I think my husband thought that, I don't know what he thought about me or what kind of person I was, but he, cause he knew how I felt about infidelity. And I always used to tell, used to tell him, you know, hey, if you, if something ever happens, tell me on the front end. Cause I'm a hurt one way or the other, on the front end, on the back end. Just let me know, but don't play me for no fool. So he, I guess he thought he got boo boo the fool over here. So I was like, okay. And and for Miss Girl that um you saw in the, in the video, yeah, she knew about me. He would have her at restaurants, hotels, games, um, had other women serving me my drinks. They'd feet under my table speaking to me. And he's sleeping with all these women. That is humiliating, y'all. So you know what? I was like, if you give me shit to taste, I'm gonna let you taste it back. So to the airport video. Yeah, I was shocked. I was dismayed because that was my first time seeing them. I knew it eventually that I would see them out somewhere. It's Atlanta, and hey, it's a small town. So it's a big town, but it's a small town too. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try my best to be classy and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes that just don't work. Because when you go in a gutter, when people go gutter with you, and I have to apologize to Michelle Obama. Girl, when you said that, when they go low, we go high. That ain't my motto, because when they go low, I go lower, I go gutter. I'm going gutter. I'm going to swim down with the rats with your ass. So I was like, okay, yeah. So she knew, and she was on Instagram sending all her little subliminal messages and all of that. Like, yeah, okay, I got you, girl. But y'all, when all this is over, I got a little story to tell about her and the rest of his story, too. Our story. It's actually our story, because it's my story to tell. So I'll share more with you all, but let me tell you something that's a cautionary tale. You all want to move on? Just say you want to move on, y'all. Because if you fuck around, you definitely going to find out. And just like him, my husband got the one and the two. Be good. Y'all hear from me later. Bye. Oh, no, no. Hell to the no. Gail finna beat your ass. You wanna shook you wanna be a sugar baby? Who took this photo? Gail's husband? Soon to be eating thin air when Gail finish with you. <laughs> Gail finna air your business out in divorce court. Sabrina Sutton. That's Sabrina Sutton. This is the girl that has been sleeping with Gail's husband, okay? Now She got a husband and they was, uh, in 2018, I guess they was married. Or they was after 2018. This was 2011. So, 2018. What happened after 2018? 
2018 and then it goes blank so she reaches out she reaches out to uh her husband y'all still married you and sabrina oh sorry let me start over hello how are you i hope you're doing well you okay boo we need to talk right now now this is not gail this is someone who is uh messaging for gail mr harold lewis you thought I wouldn't find you too, Harold Lewis. All right, now Sabrina actually started reporting this girl after they <laughs> gave up her name because Gail never gave up her name. But it says, woke up to get ready for my 12-hour shift and Miss Ma'am, Sabrina won't stop reporting my post. The devil works hard, but Sabrina Hutton works harder. Uh, let me go back to these. Or you see, finally Sabrina Hutton. Oh, Sabrina Sutton. Is it Hutton or Sutton? Sabrina Sutton. Sabrina Sutton finally found you. I've been searching for hours. Woo. Girl, why? I mean, do she look like a... I mean, kind of. Not really. They both got the same skin tone. Beautiful. Same like arch in the eyebrow. Same, yeah. I guess they do kind of look alike. A younger version of her, you know. Girl finna beat your. <laughs> uh, who took <laughs> who took this picture? Gail's husband. <laughs> ah, that's funny. You'll soon be eating thin air when girl finish with y'all. This is how Gail finna air y'all business out in front of divorce court on a projector. Oh, so she a businesswoman too, so I'm pretty sure, you know. There's been some crazy nonsense going on. What it do, everyday people, man? It's your boy PJ. Today, we back with another lit video. We back at the confessional, and yes, we stay in lit, big dog, man. Shout out to my everyday people who rock with me every day. Shout out to my player partner, Lucky Woods Deals, man. Y'all check out his YouTube channel. Make sure y'all subscribe to my channel, like, and comment on this video. Let me know what y'all thoughts is on uh, Sabrina Sutton cheating with Gail's husband, okay? And uh, what's his name? Uh, something Lewis. What, what was his name? Harold Lewis, Harold Lewis. We found Harold Lewis and Sabrina Sutton cheating on Gail Lewis, okay? Shout out to Gail Lewis, man. She going through it right now. But in any case, what does this tell y'all? Man, everybody ain't perfect. They can act perfect, but they ain't. Shout out to Kimmy Freedom for looking uh If y'all can find Kimmy Freedom 876 on TikTok, y'all can see this story that's how i was first introduced to the story and i was like mm, let me do some digging found gail lewis watched her videos reacted to it with you guys um that was the first time i actually seen the full video i seen people break it down in several different ways that's what after i seen the third video i said i gotta check out this story so i, I looked up and i really reacted to it right with y'all that's why i was kind of intrigued but i kind of knew the basis of the story because people broke it down and i was just like damn but li actually listening to her and feeling her pain and like feeling her hurt straight from her was like way worse than what i expected from the other because like the other people they just breezed through it like it was just a video i know it was damn seven damn slides like <laughs> i mean lord you seen when she started cussing you was like oh she mean business she mean business so man shout out to gail man i hope you get uh get your healing from this i mean um i don't know if y'all had kids together but it doesn't sound like y'all had kids together because you mentioned your son but you didn't mention as it, as it was his father um so uh but i'm not sure who's the breadwinner but it seems as, as if both of y'all have pretty decent lives going for you and um his required him to travel a lot which required which allowed him to be a promiscuous man okay uh but him to want to to keep you by his side while he go out and take this woman on trips and didn't take you on maybe he took you on a couple trips but you didn't say that part but it don't matter because he was taking this every time he went on a business trip it was with this woman so no matter the business that he was doing 
it, he was taking her. You know, so she was just uh, reaping the benefits of all they hard-earned money. And, I mean, I don't know how much he uh, uh, disposable income he had, but enough to ha keep his wife happy and his girlfriend happy for a few years until she found out where he was paying all the credit card bills. And I'm surprised she didn't see this earlier, but I'm pretty sure I think her women's intuition made her call that uh airlines and that airlines guy was trying to tell her she was just like she, she was being dumb at that point she didn't want to she didn't want to like admit that he was cheating like she probably was like let me see what this let me try to catch up with this man well the man was trying to tell her like hey <laughs> okay <laughs> He probably see the credit card bills and be like, uh, yeah, it's in your name, but it's a whole other woman on this account, okay? Like, come on now. And uh and uh and I'm looking at the itineraries of his past flights. <laughs> she been on multiple. <laughs> like this dude. He was trying to tell her without telling her. Like she wasn't catching it. But uh <laughs> eventually she caught on. Like, damn, maybe I need to show up, okay? Well, Everyday people, man, let me know what y'all think about this whole situation, man. I don't really got much to say about it, but, like, man, get some healing, man, because, you know, the dirt bag he was to be spending all of them on her credit card. Yeah, he paying the bill, but it's hers, dude. But that's what made it so slick, because she ain't thinking that he would do it on her credit card. She would probably be thinking that he would do it on his credit card, like his own personal. So she probably been going through his personal credit cards for a while. And not seeing nothing, and he just putting it on her. It's stupid. He he thinking like he he can't be that dumb. He can't be that dumb. To put it on my credit card. <laughs> Everyday people, man. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'ma holler at you later. Peace.